It's been a while now, and I thought I'd give you guys a few updates on some rather interesting discoveries I made while working as a security guard. If you haven't heard the last story to this, then I suggest you listen to it. But basically, my partner and I did some digging around on the spirit that I saw in the warehouse that one time. It turns out that the ghost I met was a deceased individual who was one of the workers in charge of helping offloading semi-trucks. They even had a picture of him hanging on the wall in one of the staff lounges and described him as a playful but kind person. I guess there wasn't much to worry about. It seemed like the guy was bored and must have wanted to play a harmless prank. Still, I don't think I'll be visiting him anytime soon. Within the past few months, our building or headquarters has been going under some renovations. They have been clearing out the floors and remodeling the place to better match the current trends. I guess they're aiming for a more modern look to the office, and a large number of employees were relocated to the original headquarters a few miles away. This structure is quite old. I heard that it was built way back in the day during World War II. Because of this, my partner and I were relocated to work in that old office building. The place is constructed with tall marble columns and has got this classic Greek and Roman look to it. Anyways, if you haven't guessed already, I've got some scary stories to share about this place as well. There are plenty of terrifying events and stories that have floated around here due to the history behind the building. Thankfully, these things did not happen to me. They're just rumors and stories that I've heard from other people and would like to share them. The first is about the ghost of an old employee who used to work at this building. Other security teams have had sightings of a strange apparition that is dressed up nicely in a suit and tie and wears a hat carrying a briefcase wandering the hallways. At first, the patrolling security guard will shout out telling the person to stop and that the place is closed, only to follow the person to a dead end, whether that be an empty room or hallway. Some have begun to give him a name, dubbing him the Hat Man. They've even given him a backstory that he's a secretary who has yet to realize he's dead, so he wanders the hallways, endlessly scheduling meetings and filing away paperwork in the afterlife. They say that he's a harmless spirit, as you only catch glimpses of him before you realize he's not a real person. But that's a theory that I don't want to test out, as I'm afraid ghosts don't like to be bothered. Oh yeah, one of the bathrooms in the building is haunted too. Unlike the previous one I encountered, this one is a lot less freaky. Instead, people just talk about a ghost who automatically flushes the toilet if people don't flush it themselves. These bathrooms are old, so they don't have the automatic flush and it has to be done manually by pushing down a knob. But for some reason, people have reported the toilets doing so by themselves. Like if they forget to flush, then the toilet will flush whatever waste they have for them. Kind of a nice perk if you ask me. You get a ghost that flushes your toilet if you don't do it. I think that this particular spirit really just likes the cleanliness. Either that or they were a janitor in their past life and they're just reliving their tasks from their past job. Basically, this company gets a free permanent employee that'll serve them forever. Gosh, I can't imagine working as a security guard if I ever turn into a ghost. Speaking of which, here's an interesting rumor I heard about a security personnel who lost his life working at this very building. Sometime in the 80s, they came upon the corpse of a security guard who passed away in one of the offices upstairs. The autopsy showed that he had a heart attack and died. His body fell backwards into the hallway where they found him the next morning. This is now why we work in pairs, but the strange thing is that the security guard was a young man in his late 20s and very actively fit. He played for the local college football team, but due to a knee injury, he had to retire, and so he ended up as a security guard. I mean, no one knows how he truly died, but others theorized that he was so frightened in that room that he had a heart attack and passed away on that spot. Something must have been so terrifying that made him freeze up like that and tragically ended his life. You would think that there might be a phantom security guard wandering the hallways upstairs, but strangely, no. Instead, people report hearing the quiet cries of a male at night, to which some of them began to connect it to the spirit of the security guard. The reason why is because they only, and I mean only, occur around the time of the anniversary of his death. Many suspect that it's because his soul is trapped here and unable to reincarnate. 
Therefore, he is constantly reliving his life before he passed away. Very sad if you ask me. I can't imagine what that guy went through and after hearing this story, I kind of felt sympathy for spirits like that. Spirits that are lost and unable to move on into the afterlife and are forever trapped in this plane of existence. The spirits that I do not have sympathy for, though, are those that are out to harm others. A few of the night shift security guards that have worked here often talk about the sound of lockers banging in the basement. The strange thing is that if you go down there, there isn't a single locker located anywhere. Not in the storage closets, bathrooms, or even in the entire building itself. Despite this, many have sworn that the noise sounds exactly like someone banging on a locker. I mean, I believe it because of the previous experiences I had, and I had a feeling that this building was haunted. Look, it was built during the time of World War II and has a lot of history behind it. There's gotta be at least some sort of paranormal activity throughout the building. Little did I know, I would experience something a little more than what I bargained for. On one Wednesday evening, my partner and I were busy filing some paperwork when an alarm went off in the basement. The alarm was to a room where only authorized personnel can enter. It housed important and confidential information that required an access key to enter. Due to protocol, we had to check it out and see what triggered the sound. I got up and put on my jacket, leaving the room with my flashlight and radio in hand. If I'm being honest, I wasn't afraid to go down there. It's like when you've been working for so many hours, you just kind of get in the zone and forget about everything else. It's only when I think back about it now do I still get the goosebumps. The elevator door opened and I set foot into the basement. Now, the basement is pretty old and has some tunnels and hallways stretching vast distances. It also has some rooms for storing equipment and a few offices. The place is a tad bit creepy with poor visibility as they still used those old bulkhead lights that are placed into the walls. Located in the north hallway was the alarm that went off and it was opposite of where I stood. I made my way to the room, accompanied by the sounds of my own footsteps echoing throughout the cement block corridor. During this, I passed by an old office and I swore I thought I saw something sitting at the desk from the corner of my eye. I stopped and walked backwards, shining my flashlight through the office window. Nothing. Just empty. By now, I felt something wasn't right, but still had to do my job, proceeding to the room. Everything look alright down there? My partner radioed. Yep, the lock seems fine. The door is still shut, so I don't know what could have caused it to go off like that, I answered. Just to make sure there wasn't an intruder, I pulled out my set of keys to enter the room. Pushing the door open, I felt a subtle gust of wind. Thinking back to it, it could have just been the pressure built up inside the room getting released, but I'm not too sure. The room was dark and flicking on the light switch turned on these old yellow fluorescent lights hanging from the ceiling. Brown wooden shelves lined up the space as I walked around, making sure that the place was cleared. Just as I reached the other end of the room, the door behind me suddenly shut. I jumped and turned around, reaching for my holster. Pulling out my radio, I informed my partner. Um, I think there's someone down here with me. Did you shut the door or did it do that by itself? He asked. I'm pretty sure it did by itself. I think someone's down here with me, I replied. Are you sure? I'm checking on the cameras and I don't see anything, he stated. Well, check again because I swear there's someone down here with me. It was then that I started to lose contact with my partner over the radio, hearing nothing but static. I made a dash towards the door. Afraid that I'd somehow be locked in, I surprisingly pushed the door open with ease. Following that, I quickly speed walked throughout the hallway, realizing that this had to be due to a paranormal occurrence. At that instant, I heard the infamous noise that all the security guards have mentioned at least once. The sound of lockers banging. The noise was coming from the far end of the hallway to my right, opposite of where the elevators were located, and it had a pattern to it. There would be three consecutive bangs, bang, 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 and then it would stop for about a minute, and then do it again. With this, I proceeded towards the elevator door, but waited there for longer than I would have liked. It seemed like the elevator was taking its sweet time to reach me, so I decided with the next best thing, the stairwell. The thing is, 
The stairwell is located on the other end, where the sounds came from. Just then, my radio picked up the sound of my partner's voice. Hello? Can you hear me? Y yes. Can you hear me? I responded. Yes, finally. I don't see anybody down there with you, but I think it's safe for you to come up, he said. Well, I've been waiting here for the elevator, but it hasn't been working, I said. Yeah, I can see that. I think your next best bet is to take the stairwell up instead. I told him about the sounds and he seemed concerned. But since the elevator wasn't working, the only options were to wait or enter into the stairwell. So I mustered up the courage and headed down into that old creepy hallway. Thinking back on it now, I really wish I hadn't done so. You know how I mentioned that the basement had long tunnels that seemed to continue forever? Well, no one really knows where they end, and some theorized that the basement was used as a bunker during World War II in the case of bombing or an invasion. The thing is, I had to go down one of these tunnels to reach the staircase that leads up, following the sound of the lockers. I don't usually do these things, but during this time, I prayed to my grandfather and ancestors for protection so that no harm could come upon me. I uttered those words under my breath and tracked closer to the source of the sound. Not a few minutes later, I heard the noise of footsteps briskly walking past behind me, along with strange, almost inaudible whispers. You know how Hmong people like to say how Bunsong whisper or talk? That's kind of what I meant. It's like you can't distinguish any real words. This was my sign to walk faster as I continued down the corridor and rounded the corner. Across from me was finally the stairwell, and to get to it, I had to cross a room to my left. The thing is, the source of the sound was coming from that very room. So guess what I did? I full on sprinted down that hallway and bursted through the doors climbing up the stairwell like a maniac. I did not want to stay down there any longer. Luckily, I only had to climb up one flight of stairs as our office was located on the first floor where I radioed my partner telling him that I made it. I was afraid that something would chase me up the stairs, but surprisingly, that didn't happen. Just imagining a set of hands dragging my leg back to the basement sends shivers down my spine. I made it to the office where I reported what happened to my partner, and he was shocked from what he heard. He said that as he was monitoring the cameras, he didn't see anybody on there, just me walking around and then sprinting towards the exit. I told him what I experienced from the shadow in the room to the door closing on its own. Safe to say, the basement is definitely haunted and not just by a phantom locker. This incident had a negative effect on me as I started to have very vivid dreams of being lost in that basement. In the nightmare, I would be walking around the hallways and tunnels trying to find my way out of there. However, I could never truly escape and would wake up in the middle of the night. These experiences then began to take a turn for the worse as I started to experience what many have called sleep paralysis. Almost every night, I would experience a bout of sleep paralysis like someone was sitting on me pressing down to make sure I couldn't move. These scary events often occurred right after I woke up from my nightmare, and I knew it was going to happen to me because I'd hear an eerie ringing noise in my ear before I got sat on. I tried to move and scream to get my wife's attention, but she'd be sound asleep, snoring away like a little diesel engine. No wonder she couldn't hear me. Eventually, these nightmares and events got so bad where I lost a few pounds and was even falling asleep at work. My partner would wake me up and ask if I was alright, and I'd tell him that everything was okay. Well, eventually he knew something was up and requested that I tell the truth. He kind of joked and said, you've been fighting with your lady a lot and sleeping on the couch, huh? I came clean about the nightmares and sleep paralysis and wasn't sure if they had anything to do with the encounter I had. It was then that he told me, well, why don't you do the Hmong shaman stuff you told me about? Now, my partner, Robert, was an old white guy who had been doing security for most of his career. He's experienced a wide range of paranormal activities and is very open to other religions and cultures. If you meet him, he's like the textbook definition of Midwest nice, and a guy you could invite over for a drink and end up finishing a whole case together. I don't know why I didn't think of this suggestion earlier, I mean, I'm Hmong myself, but just chose to brush it under the rug. I think it's because growing up my parents never really made me feel like I should utilize these things. I mean, our family is still traditionally shaman and we've done a lot of onengs and who please, but 
Not to the extent where we do it owning for every bad dream we get. You know what I mean? The next day before I headed to work, I called my dad and told him about my situation. He said that it's probably nothing and that I shouldn't worry too much about it. And then he started asking me if I was planning to go back to school to perhaps pursue a doctorate degree. Your cousin is graduating this year with his PhD in pharmacy. What are you going to do? He said. Great. Just what I wanted to hear. Anyways, that conversation didn't go anywhere, and I was lost at a possible solution to solve my sleep problems. About a few hours into my shift, my mother called me on the other end with concern in her voice. She said that my dad told her what happened and that she'll give my uncle a call to see what happened. My uncle is a shaman who lived in a town away from us and was the one to always help fix our family's spiritual problems. I thanked my mom and felt immense gratitude that at least my parents cared about me even as an adult. I think my dad isn't very good at showing his concern and so this is the only way he can relay his worries to me. Typical Asian dad. At any rate, I received a phone call a few weeks later from my dad, telling me that he and I were going to visit my uncle during the weekend to see what's happening to me. Here's what occurred on that visit and let me tell you, it's uncanny how much he knows despite the little information he had. On the way to my uncle's house, my dad continued to lecture me about going back to school and getting a better paying job. It'll be better for me to become a doctor or someone valuable so that the community will respect me. I understood where he came from, but honestly, I was happy where I was at and just wanted to live my simple life. Eventually, we arrived at my uncle's house, a typical mo home with dozens of cars parked in the driveway and a doorstep filled with shoes. Taking off my Crocs, I followed my dad and uncle into the living room where I told them about my issues with nightmares and sleep paralysis. Before I began to tell him about my encounter at work, he paused and asked me this. Did you go down somewhere old and dark? I told him that I did, and that I went down into the basement where I encountered scary things. You were checking out something and got stuck in a room, right? He asked. I was stunned. This entire time, I have yet to tell anyone my exact details of what happened to me. If anything, I just told my parents that I experienced something scary at work and have been having bad dreams because of it. I didn't tell anybody about the alarm or about being trapped inside the room. What you encountered down there were some old spirits unable to travel into the afterlife. Did you see a shadow when you were down there? Did it look like a man? He said while looking off to the side. I told them that yes, indeed. I saw what looked to be a shadow sitting at a desk, but it disappeared the moment I went back to check on it. My uncle reassured me that everything will be alright, and that he'll choose an auspicious day and let my dad know so we can do an onen for me. He said for now, he'll tie a red string and say some protective words to mask my scent from these spirits to enable me to sleep. However, this is temporary until we get the onen done, which will solve the problem. I kowtowed and thanked him and we left his home. For the next few days, I slept without any issues, surprisingly. I'm not sure if it was placebo, but yeah, I don't remember having any bad dreams or sleep paralysis. The weekend came when my family gathered and the ritual was to be performed. It was a small family gathering and we killed a pig for the ceremony. The nice thing was that I didn't have to lift a single finger as the ritual was done for me, so I just got to sit around and do nothing all day. A traditional Wanang event involves the Hmong shaman entering a trance at his or her altar. Through this, they don a red or black cloth, some even wear white now, that cover their entire face, which then transports them into the spirit world, where they will negotiate with or smite any evil spirits. The process is a little too complicated to understand, but I think there are some good resources and YouTube videos out there. After my uncle got out of his trance and the ritual was finished, this is what he told me. He said that there was an entity that had attached itself to me during my experience in the basement. After some negotiating, he was able to get the entity to leave me alone and to stop bothering me. My uncle stated that he put a protective spell over me, but I had to not pick any leaves, flowers, or blades of grass. This spell was to cloak me and hide me from spirits. but. If I were to pick or rip off a piece of vegetation, then the security of the spell would come loose and that's when the spirits can see me again. He stated that I was not to pick anything for the next three months, and then after that the spell will remain permanently and I am safe to do as I like. This wasn't an issue for me as I'm not someone who likes to pick flowers anyways. After that, 
we thanked my uncle and had a big feast. I returned to work the following Monday and have been doing fine. I told Robert about the whole experience and he seemed interested. He told me to invite him the next time we do something like that because he wants to see how it's done. I told him about all the good food we had and ate and he said that I really have to bring him over when we do another ceremony like that. Other than that, for the next couple of months we did not encounter a single bit of paranormal activity at our workplace. When the renovations on our floor were done, we were transferred back to work at our original building once again.